Hey, is everything okay? <coughs> oh, are you all right? What happened? Studying? Just studying? This place looks like a stadium post-troll ball match. And you look like you subbed in for the ball. <laughs> uh, j just kidding, obviously. But it does look like you took quite the hit. Are you okay? Are you hurt anywhere? Good. I was really worried about you. <clears throat> and our common room. Merlin's beard. This place is a mess. What exactly were you trying to cast down here? Popper 34? Wait. Like, basic Popper 34? I thought the first years were already in spell augmentation and evocational magic. Why are you still... Oh, wait. You're the first year who the professors have been concerned about these past couple of weeks. How do I know that? Uh, well, I'm a fourth year. I'm majoring in empathetic and cooperative magic, so it's kind of my thing to know people. Other than that, I'm the teacher's assistant for Evocation 101. Professor Darkbloom was talking to some of the faculty earlier this week about a student, calling them a talentless, good-for-nothing, sorry excuse for... Oh, um, sorry. Anyway, they said you might need some help with your studies, but you haven't reached out to any of the tutors. Is something wrong? You don't get it? What do you not get? The hand movements, the incantation, or all of it? Uh, okay, well, let's get you cleaned up, and I can try and teach you that popper. Does that sound alright with you? Good. Wow. There's such literally everywhere. It's all over y Everywhere. Hold on. Let me get a... Uh, um... Yeah, this should do. Hold still, okay? I'm just gonna... Get this spot here on your cheek. And by your neck. And your lips. <clears throat> right, uh, well. Um, why don't you go upstairs and wash off completely? I can take care of this. <sighs> Cyclone. Then when you come back down, we can practice some spell work, yeah? Hmm? My handkerchief? Uh, don't worry. Just get it back to me at some point. You get cleaned up. I'll be down here waiting. Okay, where to start? Oh? Class notes. Hmm. Oh, hey, good. You look a lot better after a shower. Ready to practice? The common room? Oh, thanks. Took a lot of prestigitation. A handful of cleaning charms, searching up how to get magical soot out of a 200-year-old carpet. But we got there, you know? <laughs> okay, so, I didn't mean to pry into your personal business or look at anything, but... While I was cleaning, I happened to glance at your notes from class, and... Huh? Oh, no, no, no. What I was going to say was that they're great. Better than great, even. The theory, the hand positioning diagrams, the incantation translations. They're better than my notes from when I was a first year. The handwriting is neat and pretty, too. They are yours, yeah? All right, so... If you understand this enough to make these kinds of notations, the real question is, what's the issue? Oh, sorry, I meant that as a rhetorical question. But yes, I think I know what might be wrong. Were you non-mage? Or born to non-magical parents? No, no, there's no shame in it. Me too, actually. My parents are nurses on the East Coast. I'm an anomaly. Most of my family has no idea magic even exists. Hell, my mums were just happy that I got into a good school when I got the acceptance letter to this place. They have no idea about, uh, any of this. What about you? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Gotcha. Well, 
We're a lot alike in that way, huh? <laughs> anyway, my point being, since magic, this whole world even, it's all new to you and me. We never grew up with it. You have no idea how it feels, just what to look for visually, the end result. But it's everything else that leads up to that moment, which is so much more important. Look, all of these textbooks, all of these lectures at this university, they're all very scientific. Full of graphs, annotations, diagrams, technical stuff. It mirrors mundane education, in a way. That, given the proper prerequisite training and life experiences, most starting magi can use their rudimentary knowledge to start pushing past their magical limits. But we're not part of their world. At least, we weren't. We don't have that prior knowledge, that experience of the world as it actually is. Breathtaking. Full of wonder. To them, channeling magic comes as easy as breathing comes to us. They know the limits they need to overcome. And we don't. Which, in a roundabout way, is kind of freeing, you know? The task, then, is to learn how to feel as they do, but better. Breathe in the power as they do. Learn the involuntary cues and experiences we never got to have. But so much better than they could ever imagine. <laughs> Trust me, it's a lot easier once you know what you're looking for. Here, stand up for me. Place your hand in front of you outstretched over this piece of paper. Okay, good. Let's try something together. Is that all right with you? I am an empath. You know that, right? I can feel you getting nervous. Just take a deep breath and relax for me. Don't be nervous. Okay, um, let me just step behind you and put my hand on top of yours. Okay, right. I want you to focus on your hand, the spaces between your fingers, the tension in each one as you hold it there in the air. The key to magic like ours is to feel not just our own energy, but the energies around us to become hyper-aware of the sensations of ourselves, our environment, our target. Sensitive, focused, becoming lost and enveloped in the details. Listen to my words, my voice, internalizing my message to you. Relax, feel my hand on top of yours the heat from my palm radiating into the back of yours. Feel the depth of our touch. In that sensation, do you sense something deeper? A connection? Good. That's great. You're doing so well. Draw that connection forwards now. Hold on to it. That's the connection to the magic all around us, inside of each and everything in this room. Focus on it, and don't let it go. Now, shift your focus back to your environment, back to us. For me, when I focus on us, I feel... The rumpling of our clothes, the dampness of your hair against my skin, the smell of your shampoo, the heat of your body against mine, our closeness, our heartbeats. Feel the beating, the steady rhythm of blood pumping through our veins. Feel how they cascade, 
complementing one another. Feel your rhythm spike and use your focus to calm it down, control it, sync it with mine. Feel how our hearts beat together and how that resonates with the connection you have in your hand. That's so good. You're almost there. You are doing so well. Last, shift your focus back and forth now to the senses of your body and mind and the focus you feel with the universe. Back and forth, circular, like the turning of a wheel. Cycle that energy, hone it, let it overwhelm you, intoxicate you, fill you up, but do not let it go. Not yet. Focus it now. Cycle your energy faster and faster. Hone it to a fine point, a needle of pure power. Your power, your strength, your passion. And now, let that passion blaze. <laughs> you did it. I knew you could. Seriously, you were fantastic. Huh? How close are we right now? What do you... Oh, <clears throat> oh, um, sorry, I, I got carried away with my explanation. Did that help at least? <laughs> Good, I'm so glad. Now you know what magic is supposed to feel like, right? It's not all technical like the professors say. Huh? You think you still need more tutoring? Hmm. Casting one spell well doesn't mean you're a full-blown wizard, right? I would be happy to tutor you. <laughs> huh? For me? Uh, yeah, it was... Well, it was very informative to my own magic too, so... Yeah. Crap, what time is it? I've got to go to TA for a conjuration exam. But, uh, y yeah. Let me know when you want another tutoring session, okay? Just remember to give me back my handkerchief. Preferably clean and not exploded. Got it? <laughs> oh my god, that was so cute. Oh, dang it! That was so close. No, it's totally okay. Don't be too upset about it. Kawasaki's third charm is supposed to be pretty complex. It's going to take a couple more tries to get it right. Okay, well, maybe a few more than a couple. But you'll get there, I promise. Professor Darkbloom's final is usually pretty standard format, year after year. So I'm sure that this spell will be in the practical portion of the exam. Still, I think it's kind of cruel to test first years on it since it requires pretty extensive mastery of the first nine popper positions. They don't call them Professor D plus Darkbloom for nothing. <laughs> but you'll do fine, though. I'm sure of it. Better than fine, actually. You're not convinced? <sighs> okay, then. Let's put it into perspective. It's been, what, four months? You've gone from not being able to perform basic poppers and exploding common rooms to not just keeping up with your studies, but also practicing advanced spell work and scoring really well on your last couple of exams. I should know about the last one. Darkbloom made me grade them. No, I didn't give you any special treatment. At least not during the grading. That wouldn't be fair to the rest of the people in your class. Even if I wanted to, which I don't, it's not like you needed it. And while you still have the occasional propensity for sudden magical demolition of school property, 
You have come a long way from where you started in just four months. I am really, really proud of you. I want you to know that. You've done a wonderful job. Whoa, hey. You're okay. It's okay. You're really not doing too hot mentally today, huh? That's okay. I understand. It's all right. I can tell when you're upset, and it's not just because I can feel it coming off of you. I don't need to be an empath to know how you've been feeling. How can I tell? I can just tell with you. It's, uh, it's not that complicated, but, <laughs> well, maybe it'd be better if I just show you. It might help you understand why you're feeling the way you are if you hear it from someone else. Um, is it all right if I touch you? Nothing weird or anything. I just want to make a point. Okay, thank you. Let me just take your hand for a moment. When we were casting Kawasaki's earlier, you seemed so... tense. And not just because the spell requires a lot of concentration. Your fingers were fixed super tight. And your shoulders were stiff and scrunched up too. Your face... You haven't relaxed your eyebrows this whole time. It looks like you might give yourself a tension headache. Your breathing hitched every so often too, where the ends of your sentences felt clipped. The pronunciation was just a little off. And even when your breathing was steady, it was hurried, shallow, and your heart beat. I've noticed this our last couple of tutoring sessions together, but especially today. Your heart goes between fluttering and pounding. Whenever we cast together, it feels like your condition gets worse. I can feel the beating in my mind because of the cooperative magic, yes. But I can also feel it physically. Whenever we get close, whenever our hands touch, it's almost like practicing your spell work with me puts your body in some kind of fight or flight. It's so warm and intense, I... Oh. <clears throat> anyway, you've been really stressed lately, huh? More so than usual? It's okay to be stressed out. Constant pressures like school or work, or even just life in general, can seem like a lot. Assignment deadlines, social obligations, meetings, all of that on top of the expectations we put on ourselves to do great things, to live and to perform well, that kind of pressure can be really, really intimidating. Oftentimes, at least for me, having all of those responsibilities hovering over me at the same time can actually hinder my ability to do them. Which sounds super backwards, but it's just how I feel. Do you feel the same way? Yeah. When I catch myself feeling overwhelmed, stressed out, worried, I try to remember the steps I've taken to get where I am now. I think it's easy to forget or ignore all of the progress I've made along the way if I'm so focused on the end goal. I end up missing the happiness that I was entitled to from the accomplishments and the experience that got me this far in the first place. It's probably why I keep pointing out your progress every time we practice together. You have come so far, and I don't think you've taken the time to celebrate your own victory. You might think they're small or insignificant, but they're so important. And it's just as important not to downplay them. Humility is a stone's throw away from self-deprecation, you know. Anyway, I'm not just saying you shouldn't be stressed out for your finals or whatever you've got going on. I'm just saying it shouldn't discredit the fantastic work you've put in already. 
that work is what will carry you through whatever's to come next. And that is something worth celebrating. In fact, we are going to celebrate. Yes, I'm being 100% serious. Come on, pack your stuff. You, we, deserve a break. This library is nice and all, but after what, four hours? It's so stuffy in here. I might be craving something mind-numbing and sweet. Oh, I know just the place. Let's go to the fairy fire, yeah? You've never been? Okay, that definitely settles it. As your tutor, I'm instigating a mandatory mental and physical break for the evening, where you accompany me to the best tavern this place has to offer. Trust me, you'll love it. It's one of the local hangout spots for upperclassmen. Think less trashy college drinking spot and more aesthetically tasteful but still swinging fireplace lounge about. They should be open by now, given how late we've been studying. And it shouldn't be too exciting over there since plenty of people are cramming for finals, so what do you think? Do you want to grab a drink with me? <laughs> In a totally mandatory and professional scenario, that is. You will? Perfect! We can leave right now through the library fireplace. I think... I still have some teleport ashes with me. Aha! Extra little baggy with me always comes in handy. Now we just throw some into the fireplace and... Voila! Watch your step. Try not to breathe in too much smoke. Huh? Walking right into a roaring fireplace. No, it's totally safe. <laughs> Come on, take my hand. Ta-da! The Fairy Fire Tavern. Oh good, looks like it's not too busy tonight. We'll be able to find some seats. You wouldn't believe how packed it gets during the holiday. Uh, hey, are you okay? What are you staring at? <laughs> yeah, it's really pretty here. The Grimbrights, the married couple and owners of this place, wanted to make a spot where students and alumni could relax and detox from all of the drama of academia. Zephyr Grimbright enchanted the ceiling so that it would show a clear starry night sky and full moon all year round, no matter the weather. He's also responsible for the floating magenta stars that light up the place, hence the name Fairy Fire. And his husband Gail makes the best spiked hot chocolate you'll ever have. They're both so great. <sighs> this is one of my favourite places on campus. Well, in the whole world, really. What do you think? You like it? That makes me really happy. I'm glad. Do you want to find us a seat while I go grab us some drinks? I have a couple of friends I want to say hi to really quick as well. I won't take too long, okay? Oh, a booth. Perfect. It's a little quieter over here, but still next to the fire. Good choice. Hmm? The drinks? Oh, I put an order in with Gail. They'll be over in a minute. He says hi, by the way. Well, that's basically what he said. I'm just sort of truncating the message down a bit. He's such a sweet man, but Merlin, he can really talk your ear off if you let him. <laughs> anyway. Ah, oh, here's our drinks now. Ah, oh, that was so quick. Thank you so much, Layla. Oh, right. This is Layla. She's one of the pixies that works here part-time. Layla, this is... A uh, friend. Yes, just a friend. They're the one I've been tutoring the last while. That friend. Okay, okay, enough. Don't you have work to do? A gale to keep busy? <laughs> Love you, bye. Ugh. Sorry about her. She's... Her imagination can get the better of her and... Uh... She has no idea what she's talking about. I'm not exactly sure where she gets all of that energy. Anyway, 
Here. I forgot to ask you what you wanted from the bar, so I ended up just ordering two of the same thing. Gail's world-famous fairy fire cocktail. How do you drink it? Oh, right. Most of the cold drinks here come in these sealed little glass spheres. You kind of have to make the opening yourself. Do you want me to... Oh? You have been paying attention. I remember when I first taught you how to produce flame. <laughs> Back then you made it out to be the hardest spell in the world. But now look at you. I'm so proud. And obviously you're doing so well because of my masterful tutoring, of course. Here, to your past and future accomplishments, failures and everything in between. Ah, sweet, tangy, a bit of spice, rice at the end. Ah, it makes me feel like my mouth is on fire for a second, but then, poof, so refreshing, right? You'd not believe the alcohol content in this, by the way. You can't really even taste it. Mm, so good. How are you feeling now? Any better? You feel... You feel... relaxed. Happy, even. Like all of the muscles in your body are untensing and... Oh. Wait. Uh, gosh, I'm sorry. I, uh... Just totally empathed you right then. That's, uh... I'm sorry. It's force of habit. I should have just asked first. Why am I sorry? Oh, uh... <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess whenever I catch myself doing it, I feel kind of bad. Like I'm peering into the parts of people's lives that they might not want to be recognised at that moment. It's people's emotional privacy. I shouldn't barge into it without permission. Huh? You're interested in my empathetic magic? Well, it's not exactly the most common innate ability, but it's certainly well documented in the Compendium Arcanum. I can add it to your tutoring lessons if you want, but... Oh, you mean my own experiences? Right, well, I don't mind sharing, I suppose. Before I realised I was Magi, a lot of my non-Madge friends thought I was a really good listener. They were always surprised when I could tell when they needed someone to talk to. I could intuit their moods before they even brought it up themselves. Now I know that even if my guesswork was genuinely pretty good, I probably was subconsciously reading their emotions too. It was nice being able to share in my friends' emotions. Their happiness was my happiness. Their joy was also mine. It was great. As I got older, the emotions of others became a lot louder, more pronounced. It was less like reading and more like theirs would dominate over my own feelings. All of the typical mundane things teenagers worry about constantly, like uh, Merlin. This is going to sound kind of left field, but like body insecurity, popularity, new crushes and uh, <clears throat> hormonal urges that crushes tend to create. It became so overwhelming. Oftentimes I couldn't tell my emotions apart from everyone else's. And even if some of those problems didn't really apply to me, the sheer amount of emotion was so overwhelming. It got to the point where I started having trouble keeping up in my own life and at school. I felt everything. All at once, like I was drowning in sorrow, insecurity, pain. Both of my moms got pretty concerned. And bless them, they did all they could to try and get me help. I went through a lot of therapists for a few years. Did you know licensed therapists really don't like when their patient can read their emotional state better than they can their patients? They kind of freak out after a bit. <laughs> anyway, I tried therapy and hells. I think that there was some kind of yoga guru thrown in there at some point, but it just kept getting worse. 
I lost myself in the noise. It wasn't until a university spokesperson who was visiting my high school singled me out and told me about this place. Yeah, apparently the Greater Arcane Administration likes to keep tabs on non-mag youth in case people like us pop up. I'm willing to bet that's how you heard about this school too. I'm thankful they found me, and that they offered me a spot here. Aside from it being a literal dream come true, being able to live in a world where magic exists. They taught me how to control my empathy. <laughs> well, at least most of the time. Being here at this school is where I learn to be myself again. It's funny. I've got mental words wrapped around me like a tight blanket, but sometimes it just slips out. I found it usually happens with people I feel comfortable with or that I care about a lot. With my mums, whenever I'm home, my best friends, and now you, I guess. I shouldn't be surprised. We have been spending a lot of time together lately. It's only natural that we feel more comfortable with each other. I mean, that I feel more comfortable with you. I guess I shouldn't speak on your behalf, huh? Look, um, if you're uncomfortable with this, with me and my ability, just say the word. Emotional privacy is very important and I don't want to make you feel violated in any way. I'll do my best to try and keep it under wraps. Be as professional as possible. Huh? You're okay with it? With my empathy leaking out every so often, you mean? You're comfortable with me too? I make you feel seen and safe. That's... I'm so glad. I've really enjoyed our time together. I mean, I I've enjoyed tutoring you. <laughs> uh, uh, but really, thank you for understanding. It means a lot to me. I don't think I've told someone all of that before. It kind of all just came out, since you asked about it. <laughs> We were supposed to come here to cheer you up, but I ended up saying all of that heavy stuff. Well, thank you for listening. You're very sweet. So, how are you feeling now? Any better? Take a look for myself? Are you sure? I just went on this whole tangent about not controlling it and it's okay? You want me to? Okay, um... I can take your hand in mine then, and let's close our eyes too, so I can feel you better. You're happy, warm, but not from the fire. It's in your cheeks and the pit of your stomach. Your mind is floating, light and content, and yet your mind is racing. You feel excited about something. No, not excited. Not just excited, I mean. Anxious, but in a good way. I, I mean, you feel like you want to, you want something desperately. And that want is so strong. Warm, so hot. Your hand is squeezing mine desperately. Or it, is that my hand squeezing yours? I feel hot. I can feel your pulse, your heartbeat. I can feel it through my whole body. Everything feels so sensitive. It feels good, pleasurable, and warm. I... I want... I mean, you want... But I want it too, I think. I... Can I kiss you? 
Yeah. <sighs> I can taste the fairy fire on your lips. Your tongue. Wait, I'm... I'm sorry. That was... Uh, this was... It, it was good. Really good. But maybe not something we should be doing at this moment. I think I just saw some of the upperclassmen over there give us weird looks and... Uh, oh god. I think that's a faculty member. Am I blushing really hard? My face feels so hot right now. <laughs> I, uh, I, um, that is so, so unlike me. I don't know what came over me. I just, wow. Wait, no, no, D don't apologize. <laughs> it was, it was fun. I liked it a lot. Kissing you, I mean, I can't say that I've not thought about it too, but it was also a lot. And really in the moment. Right, I couldn't tell if it was empathy or the drinks or because I was being vulnerable. Probably all of the above. But yeah, it was nice. I liked it. So don't apologize. It happened and it was really wonderful. But thank you. I told you these drinks were strong. Gail does not joke around. <laughs> so, a well-earned break tonight. And then tomorrow, we try Kawasaki's third again. Sound good? Awesome. You've got this. I believe in you. <laughs>